All right, so I want to start off by giving all praises to the Heavenly Father and also to His only begotten Son. Okay, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah. Yahweh, that's the name of the Heavenly Father, who many call God or Lord, but His true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. Bahashem, it's how you say in the name of, and Yahweh Shah, that's the name of who today many would commonly refer to as Christ, or they would even say Jesus, but we know His real name in the ancient Hebrew. It's Yahweh Shai. So that's the names of the Heavenly Father and the Son in the Paleo Hebrew, which is the ancient Hebrew, uh, the Lashuan Kodash, also known as the Holy Son. And I want to say Shalom as well, which means peace to the 12 tribes of Israel, who are today you so called Negroes, Latinos, and you Native Americans. All right, you are the true biblical Israelites of the Bible. And I want to jump straight into this, uh, into this lesson, right? Isaiah 14 and 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Now, this is one of those verses that many will read. I'm going to say the predominantly the Christian church. You know, nonetheless, a lot of people will come to the conclusion that this Lucifer right here is referring to some angel that fell down from heaven because, you know, they say that. He rebelled against God, so God cast him down to earth, and then he took a third of the angels with him, and now, now he's some fallen angel, right? That's down here deceiving the earth, and now he's going to attempt to over dethrone the Heavenly Father. But that's not what he's talking about. That's what the devil would have you think, or that's what the devil would have you believe, okay? And when I say devil, I'm actually talking about the so-called white man, okay? He would have you believe that humanity is actually fighting against fallen angels. He would have you believe the whole earth is out of chaos and chaos because of some fallen angel, which that's not at all what this scripture is even going into. Okay, as a matter of fact, if you go look looking uh look deeper into this verse, this word Lucifer right here is referring to the king of Babylon. As a matter of fact, let's let's actually go back to verses four. So we gotta keep this in context, right? Verse four says Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How has the oppressor ceased, the golden city ceased? The Lord had broken the staff of the wicked in the scepter of the rulers. Okay, so right here we understand now that the king of Babylon has been referred to as um, Lucifer. Okay, and, th and th in this case, this is actually a future prophecy concerning Babylon the Great. Okay, which is, um, you know, America. If you didn't know. And who are the rulers or would you say the kings of America? Okay, a.k.a. Babylon. Well, let's get this precept, right? According to scriptures, we're going to go precept on precept to kind of show you, um, you know, uh, uh, what these scriptures are really saying, right? Let me get this in Psalms at the 137. Okay, and 7. Okay, it says, remember, O Lord, the children of Edom. In the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. So now we hear David right here prophesying that the children of Edom are, okay, would be the people who rule within the daughter of Babylon, a.k.a. America. You see? So we understand that the nation of Edom and the king that you go back to Isaiah 14, okay, this king right here is really referring to his ru the rulers, okay? Now, let me pull it back up right quick so we get get back to it. Okay, so verse 4, Thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How has the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased, okay? So this is talking about the top rulers of Edom, okay? Not the president because the president... They're nothing but puppets for the elite of the nation of Edom. Okay, so right now, the king of Babylon is talking about the elites of the nation of Edom. Okay, the royal family, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds. Okay, all these people. Okay, because these are the ones who 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 um who rule who rule actually the earth, but America is their top nation, man. Okay, okay, let's get this going back to verse twelve. Okay, now we got the context. Now let's read this again. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, 
who which did is weaken the nations. Okay. So now we have the context that this is really referring to the king of Babylon. Okay, and how the king of Babylon, how they will cease from their rulership and their oppression upon the earth. Okay, now if I look up this word Lucifer in the actual Hebrew, okay, so I'm I'm gonna get this up in the strong. So this is Isaiah 14, okay, Isaiah 14 and 12. We're gonna click on this one and look up Lucifer, right? We're gonna go to the strongs. So the word Lucifer is morning star. Okay, it's strong Hebrew 1966, meaning Lucifer, the light bearer, the shining one, the morning star, Lucifer of the king of Babylon and Satan, Hillel, describing the king of Babylon. So, all right, when you read about Rev uh, Lucifer, that means, okay, the king of Babylon, but it's referring to the light bearer, okay? So, who is the light bearers, okay? Who considers themselves to be the light bearers, or you, or you would even say, okay, the illuminated ones? And remind you, this got to be talking about the king of Babylon. Okay, so let's go here. I got this up. You got the Illuminati, okay? These are the ones who consider themselves to be the light bearers, okay? The Illuminati, right? It says, people claiming to possess special enlightenment, enlightenment or knowledge of something. So the Illuminati, I'm pretty sure everybody aware by now, okay, that this is a secret society of the elite, okay? The elite, or you call them the Illuminati, the illuminated ones, you know? It says, the, Illum the Illuminati is a name given to the several group, both real and uh, fictitious. Historically, the name refers to Bav uh, Bavrian Illuminati, an enlightenment era secret society formed on May 1st, 1776 in Bavaria, today part of Germany, you know? So, look, man, this is what that uh, Lucifer goes back to. It goes back to the Illuminati, okay, the elites, which are the rulers of Babylon. You see, and and, and this is a clear description, this is a clear depiction of Babylon, man. This is the, do the dollar bill, right? The so-called currency, the great stamp that these Americans use today and if you look on the back of your dollar bill they're going to always have this pyramid with this eye okay with the light around it that's called like the all-seeing eye because that's that's how these uh they believe as if though they are god okay that's why they got the all-seeing eye with the light because they believe they're illuminated and the pyramid simply represents egypt spiritual egypt because revelations 11 and 8 if you just go to it I'm not going to actually bring it up, but it tells you that Babylon is referred to spiritual Egypt and spiritual Sodom. So that's why America, okay, uh, they pretty much put it in your face. You see, let me let me get this up too, because this is what they got right here. This is a bit, this is a better picture of the stamp they got on your dollar bill. And if you read if you read these words under the pyramid, it says Novus Ordo Seclorum. You see now. What that means is the new world order, okay? That's what that goes into. It goes into the, the new world order, novus, meaning the new world, okay? The new order, uh, ordo, meaning order, and seclorum, that just goes back to eight, the ages, or really the world, okay? Because, let me get this right quick. Yeah, yeah, seclorum, it says, did come to mean the age world in late christian latin so that's how you say the world in in latin you see so novus eclorum no novus orders eclorum which means a new world order that's on the back of your dollar bill along with this whole okay this whole uh this whole little stamp right here so that's what that's talking about man okay that's what that illuminati that's what if you go back to isaiah okay, we're gonna go back to the topic Go back to Isaiah 14, 12. How is that fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Okay, going into the Illuminati, going into these elites, the king of Babylon. Son of the morning, how is that cut down that didst weaken the nations? All right, now let me let me get this precept right quick, right? In the book of Job. All right? So you got to keep these, these things in context, all right? Whenever you're reading. Let me get this, Job 18 
and I believe it's five, it says, Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. The light shall be darkened in his tabernacle, his candle shall be put out. Okay, so the light of the wicked, which goes into their so-called light bearers or the Illuminati, because they possess knowledge, but it's not the, the knowledge of righteousness. It's a knowledge of wickedness. Okay? It's a knowledge on, on evil. You see? This difference between the lights of the Lord, because the light of the Lord just goes into wisdom, the laws, the statutes, the commandments, but the light of Esau or these elites really go into Satan worship. Okay? And, and they do, they pretty much, they have a form of, um, of enlightenment, but it's not the enlightenment of the most high God. That's why going back to Isaiah, I'm gonna get back on topic again. Okay, going back to verse four, okay, of Isaiah 14 and four. It says, Okay, thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How has the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked, okay, which is going into Edom. Okay, because Malachi, the first chapter in the fourth verse, tells you that Esau is the border of wickedness. And again, if you if you don't know by now, Esau is the biblical the biblical nationality for the so-called Caucasian race. All right, so the Lord has broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. He who smote the people in with wrath in the continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted, and none hindereth right okay because this right here okay this is going into how these american edomites okay they're known for screwing over okay these other nations because it says he smote the nations in continue with a continual stroke in anger okay so esau edom he pretty much has dominion right now man okay he is the top ruler the american society is really the top class Okay, and these Americans they go to these other nations and screw them up. They screw them over. All right, pretty much they use their military to go up into these other countries. And now, okay, the military that's actually that's actually Esau's way of stealing gold. That's Esau's way of stealing oil, land, power from all of these nations. But he likes to come in the name of his military or his so-called military, which you know. He comes in the name of justice and freedom, and he comes in the name of defending his own, you know, great nation. But the military, that's, they're, they're nothing but a pretty much a unit that Esau uses to steal, all right, to cope in these, these other nations, right? And many, and many of your troops, right, many of your troops who go to war, they have no clue what the hell they're going to. They, they, they have no clue why they're going up into these different bases, Okay, why are they going up into these other nations, setting up bases? Why, you know, why they're killing these other people? They're never told why they go and kill innocent civilians. They're never told, okay, okay, the the, uh, the basis on why they're in another country. They're just there, and they call it uh, classified information. You know, these uh, these these leaders in the military, they call it classified. So you you go being a troop if you're not. In such and such ranking, okay, within the military, okay, you you you're not deemed uh, fit to understand or to know that classified information as to why this nation is being invaded by American troops, you know, and so now these regular troops who have no clue what's happening, they actually believe that they're fighting for their so-called great nation, when when in reality they're being used to invade somebody else's country. Whenever these people who they're invading have not done anything. And it's just like 9-11, okay? Okay, 9-11, everybody knew, man, that was staged. The United States staged the bombing of the Twin Towers, and they went and put the blame on Iraq. And they did this just so that they can have a reason to go and invade um, these people. And then steal from them, oppress them, set up bases up in their nation, Okay? And all the while they're doing it, they're going to label the Arabs as a terrorist. Okay, when when really the Arabs weren't even really doing nothing, man. Okay, to them at least. But it was really the other way around. So really the Americans were the terrorists. Okay, but the Arabs, they were being blackmailed. 
and that's how these that's how America gets down. They like to blackmail a lot of these uh, these other nations that they so called are in alliance with. All right, and if, and if any of these other nations get out of order, or if they have the balls to stand up, okay, against America and this bullcrap, okay, if they pretty much step out of line, okay, because guess what, America has this this order they set up. That's why they go to these United Nations meetings, and America's pretty much like the bully, okay. And if anybody like if anybody, okay, wants to uh, uh, come up against this new world order. Because again, that the dollar bill goes the uh, novus odor odor seclorum. That just means a new world order. So if you want to step up against the way Babylon, okay, got his got uh, the way Babylon is okay running things, okay, because Babylon is supposed to be the um, like the standard, you know. So if anybody other nations stand up, hey, America is just gonna simply bomb them, okay. You know he's gonna bomb them or like they did to Hiroshima, uh, Nagasaki. Okay, these devils, they get down like that. And the thing is, they, they're never actually found out that they're the ones behind a lot of these different type of wars. Okay, America, the 200 and I believe 43 years this nation has been like uh, established as a so-called nation. I believe 223 of those years, they've been at war. Okay, going into people's nations like Vietnam. Everybody knew Vietnam. Was, was just a big uh, waste of time Okay but America loves To just go and mess with these nations Because these nations are weak Okay because these nations They're not They're not uh, They're not getting help by Satan Okay so Esau got all this technology He got all these nuclear bombs He got all the, his military might Because he serves Satan And he gets this This left hand side knowledge That's why they call him the. That's why they call him The secret society The Illuminati the light bearers of the whole earth see so man that's why we call these people the devils okay meaning the deceivers and that's why if you just look up um the the lineup for world war three you you know these nations are pissed off they hate the fact that america is this bully okay but they couldn't really do anything prior but now these nations they got the military might okay if you just look up for if you look up the lineup for world war three like i said Okay, uh, you got Iran, you got China, you got North Korea, you got Russia, and you got many of these other nations who are allied together, and they're going to fight against America. Okay, America is down there by themselves in this whole World War Three, And the prophecy is that the kings of the East, which I had already named, okay, Iran, China, Russia, North Korea, they're going to come on one accord during World War Three, and they're going to end up nuking America to smithereens, okay, because these nations, they're angry. Okay, they're tired. They're, they're tired of of the pretty much the deception, and they're tired of much, they're pretty much tired of the blackmailing that um, that America or the King of Babylon has been doing. Okay, that's why you read it again. He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. Okay, the whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. The fir trees rejoice at thee. The cedars of Lebanon saying, since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. All right. And this is going into how these nations are going to rejoice whenever they find it, whenever um, America is finally put down. You see, and that goes into the ultimate prophecy of in Revelations, the 18th chapter. OK, whenever these nations finally destroy Babylon the Great, they're going to actually see. OK, let me get this. This is going to be um, Revelations 18 and um, I want to get um, nine. Yeah. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall be well her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. See, so these kings of the earth, which again, just go into the kings of the east, Iran, Russia, North Korea, who used to do trade and who were an alliance during these United Nations. Well, they're going to they're going to see America being completely set on fire in world war three by nukes verse 10 standing afar off for the fear of her torment saying alas alas the great city babylon that mighty city for one hour is that judgment come all right going down here um 16 and saying alas alas that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet decked with gold and precious ointments okay and they cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, what city 
is like unto this great city. So that just that links up with this prophecy here in Isaiah. How the kings of the east they're gonna they're gonna sing, the nations are gonna break forth into singing whenever the Babylon, the golden oppressor, uh, this verse four when it says the golden city ceased. Okay, verse seven. Okay, the whole earth is at rest. They break forth into singing. Yea, the fir trees. Uh, it's lock you. They break forth into singing. The fir trees rejoice at thee. The cedars of Lebanon saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. And that's a parable. Okay, uh, that's not literally talking about trees are going to be singing and rejoicing. Okay. Um, if you go if you go to the book of um, Psalms 92 and 12, David likens men unto trees. Okay. You read Psalms, the first chapter, it tells you that David said that David likens a righteous man unto a tree that is planted by living waters okay you can read the book of mark 8 and 24 that's another precept showing you how um trees symbolize men so when you see these fir trees rejoicing and these cedars of lebanon rejoicing that just means these nations are going to be rejoicing and this feller this feller if you look into that word feller it just goes into like a woodsman it goes into somebody who has an axe who cuts down trees that feller is talking about esau Okay, because Esau is the one cutting down these nations, but they're gonna be rejoicing whenever they, uh, whenever this nation finally is obliterated. Verse nine, hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It is stirred up for the dead, for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It has raised up their thrones, all the kings of the nations, and they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou become weak as we? Or thou become like unto us. Thy pomp is gone down to the grave. Okay. Uh, and thy noise of what vials. The worms is spread under thee. And the worms cover thee. And this is going to go into how. The remnant of Edom that is left over after destruction. Which are going to be the elites. Because they're going to be hiding. In the underground bunkers. So whenever these kings. That it, whenever these kings see them. They're going to be in chains. Okay. Because hell. It's talking about captivity. Okay, these Edomites are going into captivity. The, I mean, the re the remnant of Edom who were left over, they're going into slavery. So hell from beneath, meaning, you know, a lower state, meaning coming down to the bottom. Okay, coming down to uh, pretty much captivity. It's ready for Esau, man. Okay, it's stirring itself up, man. It's, it's ready to, cap captivity is ready for these people, man. They got to get ready for slavery. That's what that's saying, you know. Verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O, o, o Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which did his weak in the nations? And now we have a better understanding on like what that's talking about. Okay, Lucifer going into, okay, the king of Babylon. Okay, the elites, the Illuminati. Okay, they're going to be cut down. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Right? And, you know, right this, right here, this is just going into how, you know, these Edomites, they exalt themselves above all. Okay, they believe that they are, you know, they are the, uh, the people who should dictate all things in the world. Okay? They feel like they're the ones who, who should, you know, rewrite history, make history be all about them. And everybody else is, they're insignificant, you know? That's why you have that saying nowadays, it's no longer history, but it's now his story. Okay? It's the so-called white man's story that he, he portrayed. Okay? And if you go to, the, it says, I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the size of the north. Now, what that's going into, if you go to the book of Psalms, all right, just go to the book of Psalms, 48th chapter, all right, and I believe it's going to be the second verse. It says, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. So, when it says that, you know, Esau was going to try to ascend, he said, I will sit up, I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Okay, that's just meaning that, he was actually going to try to portray himself to be the chosen people. Uh, he was going to act as if though he was the people of God, which that was the biggest hoax and the biggest lie ever portrayed to mankind. You see, 
So not only does Esau oppress the nations, but he also lies and he also oppresses the top people upon earth, which is Israel, you know? So this, this, this devil got a lot of pay for, man. So going back to Isaiah, okay? Um, yeah, going back to Isaiah just real quick. Give me a second. Isaiah 14. Um, quick second. 14 and then going back to uh, 10. No, no. 4, 13. And that I said in thy heart, I will send into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Okay? I will sit ab also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will send above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Okay? And right here, okay, this goes into how, this goes back to Obadiah on how Esau always exalts himself as the eagle, you know? That's why you go back to Ob this go to Obadiah, okay? And Obadiah, this is a this is a prophecy concerning Edom, right? Now go on to verse three. I'm gonna actually read it. The vision of Obadiah, uh, saith the Lord concerning Edom, okay? Now go on to verses three. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? pretty much saying how these people are prideful you know esau is the most prideful man upon earth and he doesn't ever he never thinks that he's gonna fall he doesn't think he's gonna fall you know verse four though thou exalt thyself as the eagle though thou set thy nest among the stars thence will i bring thee down saith the lord okay esau's space force because this man has a space force in the heavens man he has a military in the heavens and i'm saying the second heaven which is so-called so-called outer space you see they even got nasa okay if you if you actually look up the word nasa okay in the hebrew the word nasa literally means to deceive or to beguile okay so esau literally named his whole space program after a word that means to deceive all right so I call them the devils, man. That's and this that's where they come up with, you know, all these different theories like the Big Bang theory and all that bullshit. Look, man, that's that's all Esau right there. And they even have this thing called um weather manipulation where they can actually manipulate the weather where they can make it rain, they can make it snow out of nowhere. Okay, they can cause hurricanes, tornadoes, tsunamis. See, they they can do these type of things, right? And this stuff is is actually proven. These damn devils have went into depth on, on how they can actually pretty much try to become the most high. They, they try to dictate a lot of things on this earth. OK. And how did they get this knowledge, man? How did Esau being a mere man? How did he get this much power? OK, he got this by Satan. OK, this is how he got the power by Satan. Now, let me actually show you this. Right. I'm going to show you how this man is actually getting his power by Satan. Let me be Second Thessalonians, okay, chapter two, verses three it says, "Okay, let no man deceive you by any means that that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition." And this is talking about Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, which is the man of sin. Okay, who opposeth and exalted all, uh, exalted himself above all that is called God. Or that is worship, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And we went through plenty of examples on how these people, you know, they like to, they, they pretty much like to rewrite history. God, they they try to act like they are, okay, the heavenly Father. They like to dictate, okay, whether these nations should 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 do this or should do that. They like to set up their own bases. They like to t keep tabs on everybody. Okay, they like to manipulate the weather. Okay, they, they like to go into space. They just want to do every damn thing, right? They got this whole world engulfed in their wine, in their in their philosophies and their doctrines and their ideology. So this man is the one who exalted himself as God, you know, going to verses 10 now. Okay, no, 9. Now this is talking about Esau, how he gets all this. Even him who's coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish. So this son of perdition, this man of sin, his workings or his comings or his power and the knowledge he has, it's 
after the working of Satan. So that's how he gets his knowledge is by worshiping, okay, the spiritual demon Satan. That's why these people are always on the top. They got the best technology. They got the, the biggest military. They got the, the uh, they always the ones who have the first bombs, you know, like the nuclear bomb, the atomic bomb. You see, because they get all this stuff first and foremost from Satan, which, you know, I'm, I'm going to say that too, because Satan, he also works for the heavenly father. Okay. Satan is not just some, some fallen angel. No, he's a spirit, but he was created for, for evil purposes though. But Esau is using, you know, Satan for these purposes. Now, I'm not going to go into that right now because I already got a video that talks about, you know, who are the fallen angels. And it talks about uh, how, how how the angels, they do the commandments. They don't disobey the Lord, man. OK, the Lord does everything, man. OK, let me get this. Isaiah, going back to Isaiah now. Right. So we got a clear understanding on this. Let's go back to Isaiah 14 and I'm going to read 13 one more time. Okay, for thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Yea, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. They shall look, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made thee? the earth to tremble and did shake the nation so yeah, it's a man okay it's a man and these people they're gonna figure out these other nations gonna see esau okay these elites in their low estate in chains bound up okay and they're gonna be like it was it was this man this man esau the so-called white man he deceived the whole earth he changed the truth of the bible okay he he was the one who made us to think that that lucifer was some damn fallen angel or some crap when it was actually him the whole time deceiving the whole entire earth so hey man everyone's gonna figure out man that this man esau was the devil the whole time you see now going reading on man it says that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of the prisoners okay the kings of the nations even all of them lie in glory everyone in his own house but thou shall be cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch and as a remnant of those that are slain thrust through with the sword that go down to the stones of the pit and the carcass trodden underfoot i mean under feet right and this is talking about how okay after that thousand year period of slavery all these nations they're going to actually be healed because all these nations right now are kind of damaged these nations right now are have drunk of the wine of Babylon, okay? These nations, they need to be put into subjection. They need to be put into captivity. We're going to have to pretty much beat the laws into them, man, okay? They're going to have to be in the subjection. But after that thousand-year period, all right, they're going to get up out. That's that. Uh, they're going to come up out of slavery, out of captivity, and they're going to be allowed to go back and return to their own lands, okay? But they're going to still have to keep the laws, okay? The only ones who will not... Okay, go back to their own lands and who will not return to live in their own lifestyles is Esau. Okay, because Esau, he's not going to be able to do the laws, man. Okay, Esau's not going to make it out of captivity. Okay, he's going to actually be destroyed while serving slavery. Okay, because of all the hell he's going to go through. That's why it says, okay, all the kings are going to lie in glory, but Esau shall, I mean, but Lucifer shall not. Okay, verse 20. Thou shalt not be joined unto them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and hast slain thy people. Thy, the seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will raise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name, the remnant, the son, the nephew saith the Lord, I will make it a possession for the bittern in the pools of water. I will sweep it with the bosom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. So right, man, Esau, he, he's going to have to pay, man. Uh, these Edomites got to pay, man, for the, for what? The, all the rape, rob, murder they've done on this earth, the lies. Look, man, these Edomites, they're not going to go unpunished. So the Lord's going to raise up 
Okay, the strong one against Babylon, he's going to cut off from these people everything. And after that thousand year captivity, okay, after they get put into slavery, okay, the, the elites and the remnant of them get put into this captivity. Well, after that, man, it's over for Esau. He's going to be gone. Okay, let me get this. Job chapter 18. Okay, and I want to start at 17. It says, his remembrance shall perish from the earth. He shall have no name in the streets. Okay, he shall be driven from the light into darkness and chased out of the world. He shall not, I mean, he shall neither have son, okay, nor nephew among his people, nor any remaining in his dwelling. They that come after him shall be astonished at his day, as they that went before were affrighted. Surely such are the dwelling of the wicked, and this is the place in the place in this slock you. This is the place of him that knoweth not God. See? So that's gonna happen for Esau Edom, man. Okay? His remembrance is gonna perish from the earth. After that captivity, this man is not gonna have nobody, man, left. Okay, that slavery is going to be so hard that he's not going to be able to get through it. Okay, let me get this. Okay, uh, let's go to 20, Job 20 and 4. It says, No, is not this of old since man was placed upon the earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short and the joy of a hypocrite, but for a moment. Okay, so Esau's rulership is not going to last forever. It's going to be, it's going to come to an end. Okay, here, here shortly, momentarily, Esau's kingdom will be destroyed though he exalt him though his excellency mount up to the heavens and his head reach up to the clouds going back to old esau over that he likes to exalt himself like the eagle he set his nest among the stars okay all these precepts link up and he shall perish forever like his own dung okay they that have seen him shall say where is he he shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found yea he shall be chased away as a vision of the night the eye which saw him shall see him no more, and neither shall his place any more behold him. So pretty much after captivity is over for the nations, Esau will be the only one who is not remaining, okay? He's he's not going to make it, man, okay? And, and nobody is going to remember the Edomites, okay? They're going to be like a dream that you can't remember. It's like, it's like after a while, you really can't recall that dream that you had that like the night before, you know? And it's going to be like that for Esau. Esau is going to be like a, a memory that is now gone. Okay. You once had it, but it's, it's not, it's not there no more. You see, and that, that's exactly how it's going to be. So yeah, it's going to be like a, it's going to be like you had a dream, you know, and it's like, sometimes you have some type of dream and, you know, every now and then you can't really remember that dream. All right. Like after a while, you're trying to recall the dream, but you can't recall it. Now it's like it's like a memory that's just been gone out of your head. It's it's kind of gone. You can't recall. That's how it's gonna be for Esau. Okay, Esau is gonna be like a dream, and he's just gonna fly away, and we're not gonna remember who the Edomites are, man. All right, he's just gonna be out of our memory, and and nobody wants to remember Esau, man. That's gonna be like that's a bad dream. This is a bad dream. Okay, living in Esau's kingdom. Okay, he's like the virus of the earth, and he's gotta be put out, you know, so that the whole earth can be at rest again. This is Obadiah 1 and 18. Last precept I'm going to bring out. The house of Jacob shall be a fire. The house of Joseph a flame. The house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For the Lord has spoken it. So, hey, man, straight up. Okay, whenever these, whenever Lucifer, okay, Satan, the devil, when, once he's put out the earth, all nations will go back to, you know, living regular. And you know what I'm saying that that's just the prophecy, you know. So hey man, that's all I want to bring out, Lord willing. You know, you got some clear understanding upon Isaiah 14 and 12, if you have not already. Uh, but Lord willing, this video is edifying. Till the next time, I say shalom.